So to do an update, you want to go to my website and download the two applications now. So you want the XE10 and then the one below it. You want that guy there. And the workstation install below it. The workstation one is a little longer because it has Crystal Reports 15 inside it. Gotcha. So it's got more, and it's got the BDE, it's got a couple things. So it's trying, to, it's trying to help for a new workstation all the way through. So. That's why it's a larger file than the regular uh, update. Okay, now the workstation install, you can put that guy in your install folder that you should have on the server. Okay. Go ahead and do that. So Project W and probably, in, yeah, there's your install folder, yeah. So move from the uh, I think you have to go from, uh, yeah, open the file up and then move it into that folder. Because that's what you're going to use in the future. So you might as well put it where it belongs. That guy there, put it there. Good. Exactly. Okay. Uh, now what you can do is do, everybody's out of the system, I assume? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you can run your um, your regular update right now. And 7.0, and the password is the same password as before. Do you remember it? Yep. And then you just go ahead and run the install. Let it do its thing. Up, 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 up. Now, the next thing would be to run the up, run project system uh, to let the update do its normal thing, like you would normally after an update. And does a copy thing. And then you run it. And then it goes through the update process. And it's done. Okay. Excuse me, that is a project system update to get it to the 7.0 version. Okay. Now what we want to do is install the new local desktop. So you're going to go to the server, and then you're going to find your install folder. So dubnet install folder. Good. Okay, so right-click, run as admin. Okay, okay. And one more thing. For, tape, for the tape purposes, you want to be, on a brand new workstation, you want to actually have in your clipboard the location of the data folder so i just put that in clipboard okay and then we go back to our install folder um up one and then this guy here and then we did a run as and that's where we're at right now so you'll notice that it's putting purposely putting the the application in the public folder in the public desk in public folder on the local machine yep. and a, in a private in a directory called dubnet and then a subdirectory the project system okay so any user on the machine can run. exactly anybody can use it and it doesn't have require any privileges to do an update that's the key to this whole thing yep. Yep. so the next time you do an update on the workstation on the server it'll self update on the local machines and then, be, and then of course it doesn't exist, we're gonna create it. And then you notice in this case, it found the data path because it was in the INI file. So it's actually reading your INI file, uh, already it lives there. So this it knew, but if it didn't, we would use the, cop, the paste function to paste your path into this. There is a browse function over here. And if you use the browse function, it brings back with it um, specifically uh, this CFG file name, and that is a problem. So it's easier just to have the whole thing in clipboard without the extra, uh, without the extra backslash on it. So 
hence you have it in clipboard, okay? And then you say next, like here, okay? And then it creates a, a folder in the directory tree, which is fine, we hit next. Now, these are your exclusions that you want to put in the system, your virus software. So you go ahead and copy this, come over here, push this in the notepad like this, and you may already have some in place, uh, and you certainly want to make sure that these are the exclusions that you put in your antivirus software. Okay? And then you go ahead and say next, and it goes ahead and does this little thing, which is create everything and create the icons. Okay. Now, you'll notice a new shortcut here, and it says public because it's in the public folder, the public desktop folder of this machine. Yeah. Now, if this were a terminal server, it would be a public in the public folder of a terminal server. Okay. Yeah. Now, you're actually done at this point because all the rest of the things you have already done on this machine, i.e. you've installed Crystal, you may have done the registry entry, you've set your Borland engines, and um, uh, uh, it, show, it lets you see the PDF and then configure the BDE. Now, for purposes of this tape, I'm going to pretend we have not done those things. So Windows, now, Windows 7 should this is seven. Yeah. Configured as a hmm. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, so now, are you using 15 or 11.5 on this machine? 11.5. Okay. So pretending we would just go ahead for a regular, for a new install, you would run this. Now, this entry really doesn't matter, but what this is on a Windows 10 machine is it corrects the font problems if you've enlarged your fonts, okay? Yeah. And we're not going to run that on this machine. We're going to install the Borland engine. That's fine. We want it to show the PDF. That way you can see the configurations you're trying to set. And then it's going to run the BDE engine uh, to configure it. So we hit this guy here, and now it starts doing its thing, which it goes ahead and installs Crystal. Now this has already been there, so we're gonna hit cancel because we don't need to redo it. And then it uh, goes ahead and installs the Borland database engine. And again, we don't need to do that because that's already been finished on your side. And then it brings up the configurer and it brings up the PDF so that you can see your configuration. And then if we were to uh, slide this uh, down like this. We could go back to our BDE executable. Where is that in there? Uh, well, hold on a second. You're, you're looking at two different things. Maybe maximize that. There you go. Now that makes a little more sense. Okay, here we come over to this guy. And then we go ahead and set these configurations like you normally would, which is to come over here, come over here, click on this, click on that guy. And remember, we did run as administrator. That is an important point uh, because if you don't, um, it won't uh, properly uh, do the thing. So those things did not get changed. Come over here to this guy, and then we've got uh, true. We have our 100. We have our 5 BDE, and all the rest of this is fine. Okay. Interesting. Your machine, it didn't set anything back. On my machine, it actually's ah because of the Windows Seven, probably. Okay, so so that is now the last part would be this thing is ready to go. We should not have to do any modifications. I e if we opened up the properties, you'll notice that it is using the executable prod sys right there. Okay. And um, it's got the data path already declared, like so. And then there are some additional parameters. You could, uh, Winder is in place. And then Crystal 11.5 um, is there. If for some reason you have to do 11, you could down that, downgrade that to 11 right there. The installed parameter tells the system this is an installed version. That triggers a couple update processes. This music here is about, um, there's a space, so it's not actually active. But on some terminal servers, it'll pass the beeps back through the audio system 
um, if they're not passing, it uses a tone versus an actual beep. And then this no kill process there is again for terminal services so that you can not check for duplicate processes running. And then you have your ability to set your user ID and uh, login ID if you're using enhanced security. So if you were to make a change to this right now, like XXX, and you would apply this, it'll actually prompt you, well, you've got admin rights on your box, so it's not prompting you, but for a non-admin user, it would actually say, because you're in the public folder, it would prompt you, do you want, really want to do that? On a local machine, yeah, you can save the user ID in there, but on a non-local machine, you would not want to save the user ID in this public for, uh, uh, shortcut. So now we can simply double click like so, and it is running the 7.0 version. Go ahead and log in. Okay. And now you're up and running the 7.0 version locally on this machine, yet the data is up on the server. Question. Go. With this now running a local program, would doing something like a VPN over the internet make it slightly quicker? Yes, it will. If VPN is fast enough to let the data work across it, the answer is yes. But that is going to be a quick, quick, big question if the VPN is fast enough because of its yeah. still... Um, the internet speeds are the, the limiting factor there, but it, this will improve the VPN standard. That If you were using VPN, this, because it's a local EXE copy now, the answer is yes. You might be able to get through it with, with the VPN functionality. It worked previous, but it was slow. Yep, pokey. So this will definitely improve it because you're no longer bringing the EXE down. It is now local. Gotcha. Now, one of the functionalities that was very important and very difficult to make work, but I finally figured it out after about 50 hours of work, is um, the update process. So I've now, I can now force an update with this increment local, local counter here. And what that does is it sees you see now have a three version and your local machine doesn't have a three on the end. So I've done it before because that's how I've been updating your system. So it was a two, it was a one, it was a zero. So by, by doing this, when you, if we force an update, this is what the user gets. And if I've done my job right, I public dot, 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 dot. This should start run project system. The old run thing comes up now because it's going to run it. Notice itself went away. It does a copy and then it closes. So now if we run this guy here, you don't get you would have already got the update message. So that would it now knows it's on the three version. Okay. So this is a happy camper. Awesome. Okay? Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And you have a great day. Thank you.